name is Heiko and in this episode I want to take you on a short journey that starts way back in the 60s and continues till today to give you some insight into the world of the boost pedals and what they can do. If we take a look at the first amp models that were around the 60s we find among the rock and the beat players the Vox AC30, um, the Fender Bassman and later based on the Fender Bassman the Marshall JTM45. The problem was that these amps basically sounded very dark in their normal channels and often didn't supply that much gain. So usually players had to turn down the bass knob almost totally and increase the treble and the mids. So first of all, let's listen to a JTM45 in the normal channel with all the knobs in the noon position and later a more common setting that was used back in the days with a decreased bass and increased mids and treble. So it didn't take too long from there till Vox came up with the idea of utilizing a low cut and booster to get a more attractive sound that would stand out in the mix resulting in the Vox 806 treble booster. Soon afterwards from there we get into the territory of the early rock guitar players like Eric Clapton, Richie Blackmore, Tony Iommi, Rory Gallagher and Brian May. They needed more gain but also the nice cut through the mix and this resulted in treble booster models like the Hornby Skews treble booster used by Richard Blackmore or the famous Rangemaster. So now let's hear a comparison between the dark sounding early AC30 in the normal channel and then the BSM Rangemaster treble booster in front of it. This is still the way that Brian May uses his Rangemaster and his Vox AC30 till this day. <laughs> So the next logical step was that amp builders used bright caps in their amps so that the amps would already sound a little bit brighter by themselves so that there is no need for having an additional treble booster and this resulted for example into the Marshall Super Lead model famously played by Jim Hendrix that was a little bit brighter and also had a little bit more gain. Let's listen to a Marshall Plexi how that amp sounded. Still guitar players wanted a creamier lead sound, so in the 60s they added boost of fuzz pedals but only a few years later, at the end of the 70s, the first real overdrive pedals were around like the Ibanez Tube Screamer and even a tad before that the Boss OD-1 overdrive. Funny enough, these pedals, especially the Tube Screamer, in a way also worked as a treble booster because it cut out the bass and pronounced the mids. I know that many players hate the Tube Screamer for the bass cut, but that is exactly what makes it so attractive as a lead sound boost pedal. So let's listen to that. Here's a Laney LA30BL, which is a cross between a JTM45 with a Plexi power amp section, um, first without and then with the Tube Screamer pedal in front of it. <laughs> Thank you. 
So from there in the following years amps with more gain and a huge variety of overdrive and distortion pedals starting from the Proco Red to many others were quite famous among guitar players. But still modern pedals in the last few years always strived to achieve the attribute to sound amp-like, resulting in pedals like the Carl Martin Plexitone, the Friedman BOD, the MI Audio Crunchbox. But still the problem remains, I want to have a thick rhythm sound on the one side, but on the other side when I'm soloing I need a nice bass cut, pronounced mids and a tad more gain. So why not combining these two possibilities of having a solid rhythm sound, but also allowing to activate a boost? The Carl Martin Plexi Ranger features these options because it comes with a Plexi module that is based on the Plexitone Crunch mode, but also an independent 15 dB booster, which not only allows you to boost the signals, but also has mid EQ on board that lets you boost frequencies between 250Hz up to 5kHz by another 15 dB. Additionally, you have the option to leave the bass response untouched or activate two different low cuts. So let's listen to the pure plexitone rhythm section through a Fender bassman. <laughs> The knob works great to dial out some of the harshness that some signal coils produce, especially in the bridge position. So let me just show you a sound which is quite aggressive and show you what you can do with the tone knob. When it comes to cool lead tones, it's sometimes useful to use a low cut filter to cut out the muddiness. General rule of thumb could be to set the filter around 100Hz and experiment with different filter slope or move the frequency slightly. The Plexi Ranger has two different low cut settings and one setting where the bass response stays untouched. So let's activate the boost without activating the mid EQ so I can dial the the range knob totally down and listen to the sound difference of the three um, low cut settings. <laughs> Generally speaking, is the lead guitar an instrument that lies in the mids, whereas some metal sounds come with fairly scooped mids and have that typical V form on a parametric equalizer, which works great depending on the context. The leads work fine if you have some mid pronunciation. Some boost pedals have a fixed frequency that is boosted, like the Tube Screamer more or less, but the Plexi Ranger gives you a wide range from 250 hertz to 5 kilohertz, which you can boost up to 15 dB. So let me demonstrate you that sounds by doing a frequency sweep to see where the sweet spot for the equipment that I'm utilizing lies. <laughs> So to me personally the sweet spot was somewhere around yeah, the 12 o'clock below the 12 o'clock setting, but the main question is always how does it work in a band context. So um, I want to play you a little tune where the rhythm guitar parts is playing with a plexi channel, only the rhythm side of the pedal, and the solo is with an activated boost. And with this tune I want to say goodbye and thanks a lot for watching and please stay tuned and stay healthy.